What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video, focusing on Town Hall 12 and becoming more and more important as a Town Hall level with eSports and all the new competitive options and Clash of Clans that are centered around Town Hall 12. How do you three star these max bases with you know pretty good designs? Gonna be talking about that today because really the key across all these different attacks is identifying certain parts of the base what part is susceptible to what type of troops. It's not about applying uh, a one-size-fits-all attack to a base. That's not how it works. Um, that's why you see a lot of creative attacks at Town Hall 12. You can't say, okay, I specialize in, you know, I only do drag bat. Well, if the value is not there, it's not going to work. That's, that's the difficulty of Town Hall 12. There's three Infernos, there's the Town Hall, high-level defenses, um, so you got to be creative and this was a very creative attack here. We're taking a look at uh, Town Hall 12 triples from uh, One Hive Genesis versus King Jeffrey and um, I, The electrode value was there a um, bunch of buildings touching the Eagles there the Queens there um, and then One thing I love let me actually pause for just a moment So I have time to kind of talk through this because at the beginning what often happens is you get that value from your Electron, you know cloning the electro dragon but then where do you use the heroes? And I love the creativity. Um, first of all, always good to use the heroes right next to where you came in with your Electron. That way the funnel's already there on one side so you can better kind of push your heroes in. They're not gonna be flanked by a bunch of defenses because that half of the, or that side of the funnel is already gone. Um, so you just drop them and they kind of, you know, move out from there. Uh, in this case, right in this area, the wall breaker is a great touch of freeze on the inferno, uh, letting the troops actually, or the heroes, get into the base and get much deeper, get more defenses, and help clear out that path much better than otherwise would have been. So anyway, here's the Lalo. Um, both sweepers are going to be at play here, unfortunately, but that's not that big of a deal. Balloons coming from everywhere. There's a ton of troop space available to kind of come into the base hard, and um, I, I like how we used all the hastes at the beginning. Because for the back end, just going to overwhelm the base. Uh, too many balloons, uh, two uh, lava hounds still up. So although there is an inferno tower, wizard tower combo, the loons will split up a little bit, uh, which will be enough to get these last buildings taken out. So a very nice hit here. Um, that's what it comes down to, guys. We'll take a look at some more attacks, but it's about um, looking at the base and identifying how you can kind of first get value from one thing and how that can maybe lead into another. Um, so sometimes you'll be planning out an attack, you don't even know what the main army comp is going to be, but you can say, hey, this has a lot of bat spell value, this has a lot of electron value, this has a lot of queen walk value, or in this case, maybe there's a lot of value from an electro dragon just on the outside, creating a funnel, taking out defenses, uh, as is the case here. A nice bounce off the workshop, will take out the archer tower. Um, E-Dragon will move up. There's like no air targeting stuff up there. So it's just going to have a field day at the top of the base. And that creates a nice value, uh, a nice funnel for the queen there as she steps up to kind of do a queen charge. E-Dragon on the other side, because there's also value, especially off these storages, um, there's there's lots of value to be gotten because the it bounces and the E-Drags stay out of range of a lot of stuff. So Wall Wrecker opens things up. That E-Drag will kind of go around the outside. Both E-Drags still at pretty much full health here. Um, the record is coming through tanking uh, gets a lot of value there queen locks on the queen here So gets a little bit low, but his queen will be okay She'll heal back up behind that wall wrecker and yeah, like I said look at that value uh, From that e dragon up top took out another Tesla almost got the bomb tower warden the one on the bottom will grab that archer tower there So just a lot of the base already gone from this push here a little bit expensive with you know all the healers plus both e drags, but it's gonna be worth it here um, because the, he's creating a funnel for miners, which are uh, benefited greatly by all these extra trash buildings being down, as opposed to maybe hogs or lalo, where it's uh, defense targeting specifically. So miners coming through, um, they are a good troop to kind of use after you've gotten some good initial value on a queen charge or something. Then you can send through miners because. Uh, miners, dragons, there's the common thread between them where they're not, no base like screams, hey, I'm like really easy to hit with miners or uh, I'm really easy to hit with dragons. And what I mean by that, you might disagree, but what I'm trying to say is that um, 
it's it's something else that's kind of calling. It's either the funnel, the setup for the miners of the dragons is easy. You know, maybe you can get a lot of value using a funnel on your heroes, uh, doing a nice queen walk along the outside to funnel, or something like that. Maybe there's a lot of bat spell value. But dragons and miners alone, they just kind of move through a base. Uh, they don't really discriminate. They target any building. They don't target multiple buildings at once. There's not going to be any, like, value from buildings being touching or anything. So, really, it just comes down to the setup. You know, how do you set up your miners, dragons, the pathing through the base? And that's mostly determined by uh, how you can use your heroes, how you can use the small things, the e-dragon funnels, uh, stuff on the outside, to really um, set things up for success. That's the way I see miners and dragons. And... Um, that's why this worked out so well is because the setup for the miners was so nice. Okay, so moving on, we have two attacks from OHG to take a look at, both from Lek. Nice war to him. Um, not the closest war, just to comment on it, unfortunately, and that's how these wars tend to play out when it's 50 v 50 and um, no dip because, you know, a tough day for your 11s or even your 10s can mean leaving up a bunch of extra stars uh, which otherwise would be just dipped down in a regular war. So uh, it goes both ways. We had a good war last week. This week we kind of fell back. So um, hoping to uh, get back on track for future wars. But anyway, um, this one was a nice Witch Bowler attack. And um, this one's a little different from the others in that it's not like a multi-phase attack. It's kind of just uh, straight up coming through. But it's based on a lot of different features in this base. First of all, the E-Dragon Funnel is important. Um, need to take out that building especially so the Queen doesn't walk along the outside. Uh, we need the Queen to go in and get the healer switch onto bowlers. Stuff like that. She takes a weird path. The air defense is going to kind of shoot some stuff down, which is very unusual. Um, but besides that, everything moving through. I believe the King was intentionally used on the outside of the base here, which is very interesting, but I kind of like it. Um, he's a very sure reliable tank can get a lot of value tank for the witches otherwise um, those witches would get destroyed along the outside of the base here meanwhile a bunch of bowlers the queen healers inside the base and uh, they are frozen by the ice golems but not much other damage on them during that time period and that was key right there the warden ability um right here you can see there's three infernos one just went down but uh, we're approaching three infernos kind of all surrounding the troops but the Warden is going to allow everything to spread out and engage all these different sides, all the different fronts they're facing at the same time. Critical Warden's ability here. That made the attack, in my opinion, um, the way it was used. And um, that's why you don't Warden when your troops are frozen. You Warden when they're about to spread out. A heal spell can cover them while they're frozen. I mean, that's easy. You know where they are. You just drop the heal spell. Everything's in the same place. Very hard to miss. But you can't necessarily heal troops as they're spreading out, taking on new damage. The heal spell might not even be enough to keep them up. That's when you have to use the Warden, and that's when it was used here. Um, so great, great job there. Um, anyway, they come out of the Warden's Tome, start to die here, but the important thing is the Queen is still up with her healers, which is what often you kind of have at the end of these attacks. Rage is up, um, bunch of damage on her, Town Halls destroying everything, but the Queen's going to do her job, get it taken out here, and um, it's the king, the witches, and the bowlers on the outside. They're going to kind of finish off the base here. These witches, some of them are kind of low, um, but things are still moving through. And there's not a whole lot on the back end of this base. Uh, meanwhile, the queen still has her ability. Expo's on a healer, which kind of tanks nicely for the queen there. And she'll get it taken out. And then even nicer is she goes through this wall without having any defenses on her. Gets back up to full health. Um, so, you know, it takes a little bit of luck for sure. Um, two back end balloons, which is a nice touch, but gets the job done. Very nice hit here. Um, <clears throat> both heroes, actually all three heroes, I guess, up at the end of the attack, which is awesome. Okay, one more to take a look at. This one is going to be uh, probably one of my favorites from this war. An Electron Dragon attack. Typically, you pair the Bat spell with it, but I like this as well, um, especially if the Electron value is there, and it definitely is in this case. So we have the balloons coming in. These are to kind of test for seeking air mines, get that cannon taken out. That's important um, 
I think for uh, kind of trailing behind and getting some of these things to keep the balloons inside the base. Meanwhile, the clone goes down. The uh, cloned balloons are going to spread out, get more value. The Electro Dragon, meanwhile, takes uh, out the CC troops and then kind of splits off, grabs an air defense. That was critical. Uh, and also, I think we'll get this Archer Tower as well um, via the Lightning. Uh, actually, it goes down right as the Archer Tower goes down. But anyway, um, good stuff there. Baby Dragon Funnel on the other side and then going to use the Heroes up top to kind of create the funnel for the dragons on the top, get an air defense, that's great value. One thing I would have uh, liked to see is maybe a few things over here to clean up this. I mean, the dragons are gonna kind of split off a little bit, which is not what you wanna see. Uh, you want all the dragons moving through. So that's the one thing I would have changed about this attack. But besides that, everything's good, moving through here. And um, once again, it, it's all about the setup on a dragon attack. Um, the dragons are reliable, you know how much they can get, they target buildings individually, they have the same amount of hit points, you know, I guess every troop does have the same amount of hit points every attack, uh, you can see it in the stats, but my point is, they're, they're reliable, you kind of know how dragons are going to behave, what they can handle, what they can't, in this case the setup was getting a lot of electron value, uh, queen, eagle, inferno tower, a couple air defenses, and then also having the ability to use the heroes up top, grab another air defense and make a nice kind of funnel for the dragons to come through straight at that town hall. Uh, the queen was able to survive a long time. Here are these dragons that peeled off. I think they would have gotten more value coming straight through the top if they had been funneled in correctly, but they went to these buildings up here on the left side. So anyway, um, they're going to take a little bit longer, but with the Queen's ability, he can grab that last air defense, and that will allow these dragons to stay up long enough to kind of get the rest of the buildings taken out. Queen goes down, but there's just enough dragons. The Seeking Airmine goes off too, but that last dragon gets the base taken out. So anyway, that will do it for today's video. I'm planning on putting out some defensive content as well since it's been a little while. Um, help you guys base build, stuff like that uh, as well. So be looking for that. But uh, anyway, for this video, the key is look, look at the base. Look at certain uh, just mini, mini uh, attacks that get value. Uh, sub attacks, you can call it. Electron uh, push, a queen charge, uh, e-dragon funnel. These small things that are elements of an attack if they get good value, you start there and build your attack around that. Um, don't try to force an already decided on army comp onto a base. Uh, every base is unique and should be looked at from a unique way. So that's my uh, soapbox speech for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bisectatron out.